ASL Prime Week. Welcome, welcome back, guys, to ASL Prime League Legacy of the Void Beta. Here we are in the round of 16, Group B. The winner of this best three series will face patience to see who moves on to the round of eight. Guys, bottom left hand corner, the American Protoss player. From the rival Star Earth, rival StarCraft 2 League, something like that. Rival, guys, it is pure. From the brackets, rival, I'm not sure if it's rival esports, rival StarCraft, something of the sorts, but his opponent in the top right. He's tried qualifying for WCS a few times. He's been playing around in ASL, seeing if he can make something happen. It is the American Zerg player, Lormorant. But I told him I'm only going to call him Plumerant because it's way too many R's to have in a name. You can't have more than two R's in StarCraft. By the way, this American Zerg player here in the top right represents Georgia Institute of Technology. He's played in a ton, a ton of the Collegiate Star League. So just an FYI. Plumerant looking like he's going to go for a little bit of early Ling aggression. We'll still see how that pans out for him, but you are doing... Pretty much relatively what, or kind of relatively what you do in Heart of the Swarm, going for a gateway expand, but he's, st he's still got a nice wall off at the natural, and one thing you always got to remember, I comment on anyways, this is a four lanes by the way, started up, maybe to scout, but once Pure can get out the Mothership Core, it's so vital where your pylons go, because they are now, a, they are now not only a warp-in tool, not a power tool, but they're so much more important because they can also defend you, the pylon itself. So that pylon as a natural wall, you don't even need the wall. Metabolic boost is started. It'll finish about three minutes and 30 seconds. And lings are coming out. We see eight lings actually more on the way. And as I was mentioning, Plumerant going for that ling aggression, currently eight on the, eight out on the map, and they're going to go for those back rocks. Now, Admittedly, not completely sure when the links will be done on those rocks, but it will take, I think, maybe about two minutes. We'll see. Starting at the two minute and 40 second mark, they're going to start hailing away on those rocks, and Fewer has nothing ready to defend this. Currently out on the map, there are 16 links. Metabolic boost will be done at about 3.30, as I mentioned, and it's really going to be key. How, just how quickly does Pure notice this? You can't... I I think you can't force field off the base in Orbital Ship, not Orbital Shipyard, what I'm talking about. Moonlight Madness, the back the back rocks, you can't force field that off with one force field. There's like a one ling. One ling can get through on the very edge, so it's a little bit of an issue to wall off. For now, though, Pure does start that pylon. The workers, we'll see if my two minutes was incorrect. I think it was terribly wrong. Only about 30 seconds, but let's see that happen. More lings on the way. Currently, there are 30 lings, but a bulk boost seconds away, and... The Mothership Core is, I mean, he's preparing for something, but she is preparing for something at least, but it's going to come to complete supplies. Pure at 30 lings at his main base. There's only one Adept currently out. Gateway is started, but there's no sentries. It's not like there can be a force field once the probes get down this ramp. The force, uh, the Fortnite Overcharge does go off. The Adepts here and the Zealot will be able to hold off these lings, but now lings also heading into the natural base. The Mothership Core is not in position to Fortnite Overcharge anything in the natural base. Then the main will go down. Plumerant looking like he's going to take a quick game one, but we'll have to see off the back of this, by the way. Both play up. Oh. GG. Plumerant takes game one. Welcome. Welcome to game two of this best of three series. This is ASL Season 5 Prime League Legacy of the Void Beta. We are in the round 16. Bottom right hand corner of Ruins of Ceres. We have the green Protoss player, Pure. And his opponent in the top left hand corner, the purple Zerg player, currently up 1 to 0, it is Plumerant. His first scout will get there, at least to the bottom left, that is Plumerant. That Orb will get the, to the bottom left about 120. And relatively from there, he's going to go to the bottom right from there. So I think he will get at least. Ideal scout here. Actually, either way that works out. If your um, if your opponent's cross spawns, either way it'll be about the same scout. If you go cross 
down or down and then across in this map. But nevertheless, about 120, he'll know, okay, you're not there. There's not an Oracle push, something that's going to be really scary off off my back from the bottom left-hand base. This appears in the bottom right. Pure opens up the same way in game one, and it's one of those tricky things because it very much had to do with the map last game. That You can't necessarily say, crap, I just shouldn't do that build. It's more like, crap, I shouldn't do that build on Moonlight Madness. When you can get through my back rocks, there's just a lot of variables on that map you can't quite account for completely as Protoss. So we will do that build again. Well, Plumerant completely switches it up. Like, you know what? Game one, I'm setting the tempo of this th best of three series, doing damage early on, and now this game... I'm going three hash before pool. So we'll see how that works out. We'll see what he goes into. I think there's a lot of there's a lot of really cool possibilities with this. But your layer is so delayed, the cool lurkers or just the roach pushes with roach speed, whatever, are pretty darn delayed as Zerg. So definitely looking to go into that macro game. Not maybe looking to make a timing attack or something of the sort. I don't think it'll work out. Now though, Pure himself is kind of posturing like he may throw down a proxy pylon. He's scouting everywhere in there. He scouts the third base. He knew something was amiss there. He saw those... I think he saw the creep, at least. Yep. He... Actually, he did not see the creep of that third base, so... I want him to assume it's there, but he does not have 100% confirmation. Looks like a little bit of a delayed natural base. In the bottom right-hand side, though, for, for Pure, he's decided to go Stargate this time. It is at the front of his base, though, so a Ling, I mean, could easily scout that. Yes, it's going to... Kill the roaches coming out from the roach horn, but man, now with Ravengers, roaches also have nice offensive capabilities. Roach horn is in the natural base, in a nice place where it's not going to get seen by a drop, something of the sort early on, but still, there's some crazy Protoss pushes. First couple links from Plumerant, we move out, and yeah, they will get that nice scout. They see the Stargate, which is which is really, really nice for Plumerant. The key here, though, off the back of that is, yeah, Hydras are good. Yes, Hydras hit air in PvZ, or at least technically in CvP, but they just don't really... They don't have the stuff to kill a Skytoss army, if that's really where we're seeing Pure go. He's only got one Stargate at the moment. There's a second Stargate on the way, but it's, it's going to be really key to see how Plumerant reacts to this, whether he's going to go into Roaches. We see Lair on the way, whether it be the Ravenger kind of way to de deflect it. For now, though, he's got almost the best scout he could possibly want. Notice that no unit was started in that Stargate while the Ling was there. Albeit, Pure may not have had the income for it, but still, you gotta remember that you can see that unit being coming out, whether it be a Phoenix to snipe down Overlords, an Oracle, or a Void Ray. We see one Void Ray in that first Stargate, maybe something in the stack second, and Void Ray Adept push is super scary to deal with. As a Zerg player myself, I've only found the, the best way to defend it, really. I've found his Lurker, to get out a couple Lurkers, um, get up to Hydra Tech quickly, but that's generally not on this map. I think I've done it on Lairlac Crest, so we'll see how our lovely Plumerant deals with it. Hydralisk Den is coming down for him. Roach Speed on the way, eight Roaches, and I mean, it's key here just to keep your opponent on the back foot. Keep the Protoss player on the back foot as long as you can to get up that nice economy. Yet, on the other hand, you just it, it's such a scary thing to move into, a nice Sky Toss Void Ray army. But it's still up to Pure to say, is he going to do a Depth Void Ray? Or is he just going to do a big, big Sky Toss army with a Mothership? Something of the sort. Roaches are in the main. They should be able to kill, I guess, a drop. Just waiting. They don't want to be scouted by a probe, an Adept, anything of the sort. Because really right now, this Adept of Pure is essentially his first scout he's got. But he does see that Adept. It's on, cre it's on creep. And I guess he's going to go for Concave or Surround. Oh, took him a little while. But he will get that nice Surround, and it's not going to get anything done. Oh, it may actually be able to get up in the main. No, that's not the case. Spots Roach Warren. Does it actually see it wiggling? We'll have to see whether he knows Roach Speed is up. You have to kind of assume that. But if Roach Speed wasn't up, you may be able to see quicker Hydras. Is probably the only thing, realistically. As a Protoss player, you could get out of that. For now, though, Pure is descending to go those heavy Void Rays. There's the Fleet Beacon, and I assume Pure is going to go into just mass Stargate style. Not going to go for that kind of Void Ray Adept cheeky push. There's the Fleet Beacon. We'll see how, what he utilizes that out of, but base of, of Pure as Creep Out, it's not going to be takeable. Fourth base of Plumerant is secured, and now, yes, he's got a nice Hydra army. Yes, he's got a nice Roach army, but does he actually have enough Hydras to kill the Void Rays when they're fighting on the cliff in the main, when they can effectively 
kind of blink stalkerish, go back and forth and have very nice micro. Carriers are coming out. For now, though, the Void Rays, they're going and trying to kill something. At the moment, yes, there are 18 Hydras, but these Hydras are unupgraded. Actually, do they have Hydra Speed? They do have Hydra Speed. Beautiful. They'll be able to catch up and push it off. Maybe not as much micro as I was thinking with the Void Rays. For now, though, that that's scared. Our lovely uh, our lovely Zerg player here, Plumerant, pushes out some more Hydras, getting Infestation Pit, getting Spore Crawlers. Not too many, though. He's playing this very well, and he just knows, you know, if I can defend... I'm gonna. If I can defend a little while, I'm gonna have a critical mass of hydras where your void rays just do crap. But still, it's really scary to deal mass to deal with mass sky toss armies. Plumerant will completely push back that attack. He secured his fourth base, and I think he's he's gonna have a nice spot into the mid to late game, which is very nice. He's going infestation pit, getting out his hive, and just really covering all his bases, countering anything before it hits him. I like the Infestors. I'd love to see Infestors. Nice move. For now, they're pure. I mean, he's still going on that aggression. Carriers are on the way back home. Interceptor upgrades are going down, and Twilight Council, so I assume pure is going to maybe add in some Stalkers on the bottom, try to snipe some Corruptors of something of the sort, or do Adepts. You can see some cool Adept plays. For now, though, Plumerant, he is going to scout. Oh, he beautifully scouts his third base. I was going to say, there's not the normal third base, so he may not scout it, but he does scout it. And this may be a timing that he can move out. For now, he's just going to force two photon overcharges. Doesn't quite see the carriers. But once he identifies the carriers, it's really just, okay, you are going this mass sky toss, which he may have identified that earlier purely by, there's no gateway army coming to defend the third base. We'll have to see how that pans out for him. Plumerant, though, finally has the three base economy up. The main, though, is pretty close to mining out. So he's got to be careful, but the Void Rays constantly of Pure are really keeping the majority of the army of Plumerant back. I'd love to see some pressure into the fourth base of Plumerant and just really utilize there's very little there. There's nothing at that fourth base. And all these Hy Void Rays actually will be caught up by the Hydras. Only two Void Rays left that started off at being four. But like I was saying, what? We have eight Void Rays at the Zelnaga Tower. How many do we have in the main? We have 16 in the main, so that's 24 Void Rays uh, Hydras overall, not with the main army. Finally, now, they will be moving out, but Pure has been given a lot of time. One key thing, though, he doesn't have the Mothership. Yes, he's got a core, but it's so key when you can get that invisibility. Yes, you say, Drenok, all you need is an Overseer, but still, it's a tricky thing to do. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta keep those Overseers alive and with so much, so much Stargate units. It's really hard to keep them alive. Now, though, we actually see Vipers, which I also like. Blinding Cloud is pretty good, but, man, sometimes I'm torn between wanting to do Fungal and torn between Vipers. We'll see, though. Blinding Cloud, really good, and then, of course, the Parasitic Bomb, even better. They're going to be able to kill a lot of these carriers if the carriers are too clumped up. Woodbridge is going to try to get some tech, but at this point... Oh, it actually pulled back the entire army. I was going to say, at this point, they... They're just going to sit there and wait for the Spore Crawler to get down, but the entire army of Plumerant is forced completely back. Now, he is maxed out to a Protoss player who's only three-fourths maxed out at 150 out of 200, so that is a really big move that's allowed him time to get Storm out. That's allowed Carriers to get out. Those two Void Rays sacrificed themselves for Iron. Almost killed that Hydralis Den. If we saw Warp Prism drop, it would easily kill that with like one Zealot. Now, though... Plumerant moves out, and that bot time for Pure has allowed him to get up High Templars, Carriers, but still not the Mothership Core, or sorry, not the Mothership, which is really when it starts to get scary, that Sky Toss composition. At the moment, the Sky Toss is only at plus one zero. It's ten minute mark, it's a little bit late for upgrades, but guys, the gigantic army of Plumerant not only is gigantic, but he's got 5,000 minerals, 1,700 gas. This is a perfect army to push off of with Spire about halfway done. Plumerant can sacrifice this entire army and make, what, 20 mutas? It's a lot of mutas. We'll have to see how good his micro are. Is though, Pure gets a nice storm. He's got to be very, very careful. There are no upgrades for his for this ground army, and he cannot afford to lose a single High Templar. But oh, there's the engagement. We'll see if if we see Pure actually utilize that release Interceptors, but now they're flying relatively close. There are so many Interceptors, though the Hydras are actually targeting down those Interceptors, allowing the Storms to kill pretty much everything. Almost half the Hydras do go down, but off the back, back of this, we see 19 Roaches, 3 Hydras coming out for Plumerant. I'd love to see a Parasitic Bomb, at least onto some of the carriers, but Plumerant has to worry about feedbacks. The feedbacks will, oh, they will almost kill these Vipers. Nice Parasitic Bomb. See what happens there. Actually, it does kill the Viper if there's the feedback from the High Templars. Won't be the situation, though. But, oh, beautiful Parasitic Bombs! I 
think all the carriers are going to go down, actually, here. The Hydras will engage these, these um, carries here. Parasitic Bomb brings it down. It's seven seconds. Deals 90 damage over seven seconds, so no, it won't quite kill all of them. I was thinking Starbo in my head for a second. That In Starbo, the uh, Brutor Starcraft mod, it brings it down to, like, one health, but that's not the case here. Nice feedback goes down. A full energy Viper will die to a feedback. Let's see how that goes down, though. Again, yes, these Hydras are doing damage, but they're doing it to the Interceptors. Now that you can actually send out the Interceptors, too, it's even more damage, and the Hydras are just doing nothing against these carriers here. There needs to be more Vipers out to do anything. And now the Vipers are gone, there's an attempt at a tech transition into the Cor Corruptors, and I think barely they... Actually, they're not going to kill it. I think there's just too many Interceptors here to deal with it. More carriers are reinforcing. There's an Archon on the ground to deal with some of these Roaches, but the Roaches, realistically, they do nothing. Still, that Mothership Core is in the middle of the... Is still in the middle of these guys. It could teleport home if it wants to, but nope, uses its second time warp just to delay any Hydras down that ramp. And now, going for that economic damage. We see Chitinous Plating coming out for Plumerant, but he's got 70, 70 gas. He's using his gas constantly. And you need, what is it, like 200 gas? Yeah, there's, there's no option to move into Ultras from here. I say just keep trying to do those Vipers. The Vipers got the most damage done there, but the Hydras just did not focus down pure. They were they were all going for the Interceptors. We'll see how many Corruptors can do it, though. If there was enough, the Corruptors really just going down with these Storms. Maybe by themselves they could take out the Carriers, but barely they will stop this army. But a, no, a big note here. What's going to be key is how Pure engages off the back of this. What he makes off of it, and actually he's just going to push through. But all all the gas, all the 2,500 gas bank that Plumerant had went into the carrier, or went into the Corruptors. It did not go into Ultras, did not go into, did not go into Mutas from the Spire, whatever it is. And so now here, he's got nothing off the back of this he can go to. While Pure already has started his army back at home, he's already got an army on the way. And for now, I mean... The one Interceptor by itself, there are so few Corruptors it will go down, but the Archon's on the ground just shredding all the army. The entire bank of Plumerant is gone, and I mean, at this point, he doesn't even have a macro hatch to maybe push out like a thou. Like, what has he got? He could push out maybe a hundred, hundred lings with his current bank. He doesn't have that, though. That may be completely wrong, actually, now that I look at it, but he, he could push out a decent amount. He could push out 50 lings with 500 minerals, but that's not going to be the situation now. Pure... Even though he's got such a small army, it just has so much health with these carriers going up to 450 health overall, plus shields, plus health, and I mean, Plumerant's going to fight this off, but there's nowhere he can go from this. Currently, it is 21 drones to 67 probes, and that's that. this is what's so scary about Sky Toss. You have to be so good with your micro, and maybe it's not even being so good, but you either have to hope your opponent gets greedy, you snipe a base with your roaches, snipe a base with your hydras, or... You catch them in a bad position, that's just not what happens. With the carriers mixed in with the Archons, it's so incredibly hard to engage. I think right here, Pure takes game two, which would move him on to the winner's match. He did win game one, or sorry, Plumerant actually won game one, so it would even it up one to one. Plumerant, he's got this base in the right-hand corner. He's trying to stay alive, but if, if Pure was like on a two-base push, yeah, okay, there's the GG. I was gonna say, Welcome back, guys. This is ASL Season 5, Prime League Legacy of the Void Edition. Here we have, in the bottom right-hand corner, the green Protoss player, Pure, or Pure. In the top left, we have the purple Zerg player, Plumerant. And what I've seen from Plumerant, even though he lost last game, I mean... He's really playing in the tournament matchup. He, he's got his mind on how to play in a tournament. Game one goes for tons of Ling Aggression. Game two goes for a three hatch, albeit it wasn't cross spawn, but three hatch before pool, he's really playing in a tournament mindset that I want to juke you out, which may work, but not against Pure, who opens the same way each time. You know, for now though, I mean, this is one map where I'd say he's still got to worry about that early lane aggression, which we could very well see. But sadly, Plumeran is not going to be adding on a quick gas, nothing of the sort. He will be kind of preferring that Roach play, which we'll see how that works out versus Pure, whether Pure goes Stargate again or something like Robo. A lot of possibilities from the Protoss players these days. 
I'll have to see, though. Two guys going down the main of Pure. I, I like this build that we're seeing him do. At the same time, it's so... It, it can take so much damage from just a few early lings if we saw, like, a 12 pool, or actually a 10 pool, I've also seen. When you put your first drone into the spawning pool and second drone into the extractor out of the 12, and you end up doing a really awkward 11 spawning pool, 10 extractor. I don't even know how to comment on it, but <clears throat> definitely... It is not a nice thing. Or it's, it's not a, maybe a smart thing to do three games in a row. For now, though, Plumerant will let him get away with it. Or we'll go out for the scout, and if it scouts to them and there's no extractors, that's still a little bit scary for Pure. He may think he's going for another three, quick three-hatch, and that may be very well what Plumerant is doing, but it won't be a three-hatch before pool. There's, there's the first gas for Plumerant, and here's the first probe for Pure. Scout will get in, uninterrupted by any Inium. Any queens here? Those queens did start about 210-ish, and you should know, roughly by the three-minute mark, there's got to be queens out for a Zerg player, so the probe's kind of doomed. Does it see the extractor? It did not see the extractor, so that, that's pretty key right there. And that's a little bit awkward for Pure. We'll see if he plays off that, maybe goes for a quick push into what he may assume is a third base. Not going to be the situation, though. Double extractor goes down. I assume this is going to be a roach push. Maybe could be a spire or something like that, but... I'm going to go with the nice safe. Roaches, Ravagers are good. Over on Pure's side of the map, the bottom right, he is not going Robo yet. We saw from Patience in his Protoss, this was P PVT albeit, but we saw he really liked doing the gate into, or two gates into Robo, which you can't compare matchups to totally, but you can still kind of say that's a cool build. You can hold with just a couple of depths early game as Protoss. So why not just kind of rely off your one gate, maybe two, and do a nice robo play. We'll see, though, there's the robo for pure, and he's going to do that. He may, oh, if he gets, that's a nice kill if he gets it. It's not actually going to supply block Plumerant, but you feel good about yourself. You feel real good. And there's the Roach Warren from him. Lair, also coming down for Plumerant. Like I was saying, if you scout the delayed to Extractor, it's almost 100% of the time, 95% of the time, Roach pressure. Especially with the third Extractor going down. As long as there's not a fourth, it's, yeah, you're doing roach pressure. Which will be met by a warp prism. Pure is going for what I assume is going to be some sort of a depth, depth push, but at the moment he's only got two gates. He's got Zealot Stalker on the way. Maybe he's just kind of, he's providing himself an avenue of attack, just giving himself a little room. There's actually three gates going down, four or five gates. You love the gateways to utilize this warp prism, but... Both players are going to pass blindly in the night if it times up perfectly, because Plumerant, guys, that is a Nidus network we're seeing in the top left. This is going to be actually what we saw Fenner do in the round of 32, kind of funnily enough. He loved those Roach, or he loved those Roach Nidus's. The key for our Zerg player, that is Plumerant, is to get the Queens in first, which that's what it looks like he is doing, to be able to heal that uh, that Nidus network as it comes up. All these gates are going to be down and ready, but the Warp Prism is going to be on the other side of the map. Albeit, though, it's only two Adepts. Not that big of a commitment for Pure. It's actually even better. He can try to annoy Plumerant. Pure, I am really hope he sees this. Does he actually see it? He doesn't... Oh, man, he does not see that Nidus network right there. No idea. There it goes down. The Queens are not even needed. The Queens will come out to try to transfuse it. But that's not the case. Might as well just spread some creep, get on going, start making a base here. There is one Immortal. There's the quick warp in. It is with the gate, beautifully enough. Sometimes you see Protoss players warp in out of pylon without a gate, but now we're going to see how good those set trees are. No photo nova charges yet. There's the one photo nova charge, but no kind of more aggressive. Maybe to go for the Nidus network, but now there's so many roaches in the main base. Yes, there's the warp prism on the other side of the map, but it is not doing any damage right now. That was the one key. If maybe while Plumerance, all his vision was focused on these units that could do some damage back at home, but I don't think that's going to be the case. Finally, two Immortals are out, but there is... How many Queens? Four Queens here. They can transfuse for a while. Ten Roaches are on the way, and they will come out soon, but these Stalkers may actually be able to kill this. I think this this attack may have been pushed off, but right now, Plumerant, he needs to get something out of this. Yes, he killed three Stalkers, but he's... Oh! He kills... Or he kills three Pylons. That's that's what that's all he gets and loses the two queens. That was actually almost completely completely gone right there. Um, that really didn't do that much damage from Plumerant, and now it's forced out to, uh, an extra immortal for Pure. He's gonna be able to defend all of this. Third base is coming out for Plumerant. Yes, um, I say for Plumerant, what he should have done is not kind of taking the awkward path around the Nexus, just going straight into the mineral line, try to kill as many probes as he could because. 
it was just weird. He he wasn't decisive. As a Zerg player when you Unitas Network, as a Terran player when you drop, as a Protoss player when you drop, you have to be decisive. You go in, you, you, you kill workers, you kill a tech unit, or you pull the army back. That did relatively none, none of those things. Killed some pylons, yes, but none of those things for now. Boomerang's going to have a dicey defense. We'll see how good it is, though. Currently, there are 24 roaches, but there's only two queens this time. One queen will go down. There is no transfusion, nothing of the sort. And that is scary when you have to deal with two immortals, eight adepts, eight stalkers, there is no blink at the moment, but still, Pure has got a very nasty army, especially with sentries at this small number of roaches. But roach speed is only a couple seconds away, and Burrow, Boomerang can somehow get to that. He may be able to burrow micro for a little while, but for now, though, he's doing that Zerg. I mean, he's a confident Zerg player. He's pushing forward. He's pushing against the sentries. He does manage to snipe a few sentries and adepts, but all that time, the Immortals were able to get their damage down and really bring a lot of these uh, roaches very low in health. The, um, the roaches try to go for a snipe, but you just cannot go for the big roach push forward snipes that you could before in Heart of the Swarm ZVPs because of that shield that the, the that the Immortals have, that barrier. You cannot quite snipe them. I think barely we're going to see the Micro out of Pure, which should be able to push this back. Tunneling Claws is on the way, but I don't think it's going to be in time. There's a couple roach, or there's a couple of roaches still alive, but with that Micro, these Immortals take actually only one Immortal takes a decent amount of damage. The other Immortal only lost a little bit of shields. He will heal that for now. 24 workers dead you can see on the left hand side of the screen guys and there's the gg thanks for watching the video please subscribe to support the asl by hitting the button now